The 3.30 p.m. meeting of the Bakersfield City Council is now in session. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 3.30 regular City Council meeting of September 27th, 2023. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go Here. Vice Mayor Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Kaur. Thank you. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on this afternoon's agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are also given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk who will give copies to the Council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on this afternoon's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify a specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items listed on this afternoon's agenda? Mirko, we have not received any speaker cards for items listed on tonight's agenda, nor have we received speaker cards for non-agenda items. Thank you. Next item, please. Closed session, item 3A, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation regarding Martinez Steel Corporation versus Security Paving Company, Inc., the City of Bakersfield, et al., uh, item 3B, conference with legal counsel, potential litigation, one matter, and item 3C, conference with legal counsel, initiation of litigation, one matter. Thank you. Yes, sir. Motion to adjourn to closed session. Go to closed session. Um, reconvening the 3.30 meeting of the city council. Madam city attorney. Thank you, mayor. On closed session, there were three items. On item 3A, there is no reportable action. On item 3B as in boy, there is no reportable action. And on item 3C, uh, direction was given by a majority of the actually unanimous uh, vote of the council that was present, which is 4-0. Absent was council member Arias, council member Freeman, and council member Kaur. And that's it. Thank you. And with that, we stand adjourned at 5.06. And we'll start our next meeting in a few minutes. Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular City Council meeting of September 27th, 2023. And welcome to all of you. I know we have some students from Professor Holmes' class at Bakersfield College. Welcome. We're glad that you're participating in the civic process. We had the pleasure tonight of having Pastor Andrew Spradlin, who's the co-senior pastor at Valley Baptist, to offer the invocation. I know that that ministry is growing. We see the impact all over our community. And following the invocation, uh, we have a youth commissioner here, Tanvi Talapali, who is a sophomore at Stockdale High School. She's going to lead us in the pledge. Uh, Ward 5, youth commissioner. And... Um, 
well over a 4.0 GPA, California Scholarship Federation Award winner for 22 and 23, Girls Varsity Tennis Team 2023, Kern County Science Fair, uh, winning second place in Earth and Environmental Science in March, and I'm sure a lengthy list. So we're always so proud to have our youth here. Thank you for serving on the Youth Commission. And Pastor Spradlin, thank you so much for all that your uh, group does. Would you all please stand? Oh, I forgot to do the roll call. See, I do mess up. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. And Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Core. Here. Thank you. And now would you all rise, please? Let's pray. Father, what a wonderful evening this is. We thank you so much, Lord, for the city of Bakersfield. We thank you, Lord, for these city officials and all your public servants. And Lord, I have no idea what's all on the agenda tonight for this uh, meeting, but you do. You know every aspect and every detail. Uh, you know how all of the business that's going to be done this evening uh, matters uh, because it, it affects people and people matter to you. Thank you so much, Lord, for caring about us and caring about our lives and every aspect of them. We thank you for your love. Lord, I pray that you would give uh, these officials an abundance of wisdom. You tell us in your word that if any of us lacks wisdom to ask you and that you'll give it to us generously and liberally. And so, Lord, I ask that for all of these that are going to be discussing important matters and making important decisions, Lord, that you would give them an abundance of wisdom that comes from you. Lord, I pray that they would lead with love, they would lead with wisdom, and with care. Lord, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, please join me in doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Tully, and to her dad, thank you for serving at CRC. Pastor Spradlin, thank you very much. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to leave at this time. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos. For safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior Behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting prevents the City Council from conducting the, bu the business of the City. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, outbursts from the audience, and surpassing the two-minute time limit. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4A. Proclamation to Jennifer Henry, Executive Director of Links for Life, declaring Paint the Town Pink Month in Bakersfield during October 2023. Welcome, Ms. Henry and team. And you'll have an opportunity to introduce a team in a while. Council members, mothers, daughters, sisters, friends, are impacted by this invasive disease. Entire families, people that we know, are affected. And we know that early detection saves lives. Regular self-examinations, yearly mammograms are key to early diagnosis. It's my honor to read the following. 
The mayor of the city of Bakersfield, California has officially proclaimed October 2023 as Paint the Town Pink Month in our city in recognition of the 400 Kern County community members who will be diagnosed with breast cancer annually and nearly 100 who will bravely lose the fight. In recognition of the unwavering support of family and friends, offering sanctuary and encouragement to loved ones in the midst of treatment. In recognition of Links for Life and other organizations committed to increasing awareness and finding a cure for breast cancer. In recognition of the importance of raising public consciousness and securing funding for research. And in recognition of the efforts to unite our community through awareness and personal experiences by displaying the color pink during the month of October. We celebrate the more than four million breast cancer survivors. We give hope to those in the battle and honor those we have lost. And thank you so much, Links for Life, for your more than 30 years of service to our community. It's my honor to present this proclamation to you. Jennifer Henry. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes, being our 31st year in Kern County. Um, thank you, Mayor Go, council women and men. It's exciting to see so many women on our council these days. Um, October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, you'll see, see pink and it's not for Barbie, so please remember. The bows will be going up on the 1st of October down Truxton and also on Chester Avenue, and we will be turning this town pink. Join us on the 30th, which is September, at the park at Riverwalk. It may rain, I hear, but we'll take the rain because survivors battle and we can be out there supporting them and join us for the 500 who will walk and lacing it up. Every dollar that is raised here in Kern County at Links for Life stays in Kern County. So there's no national office, there's no regional office. You see Links for Life, it's Bakersfield. Here we have with me, I have two of my board members. I have my past president, Maritza Menez, and Carrie Johnson, a breast cancer survivor who I must say was in Africa on mission when diagnosed. She has a story. If you want to hear it, she will tell it someday to you. So we want to thank you for supporting Links for Life, supporting the survivors. We've sur provided nearly 200 women with grocery cards, which are $100 a month for up to four months while they're in active treatment, and it helps them so that they can pay other expenses. But it's because of the city council and our community that supports us that we're able to provide these to our city. So thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you. Yes, I remembered my camera. We also have uh, another reason to celebrate uh, now. And several of us had the pleasure recently of on September 15th being El, El Grito at uh, the Liberty Bell to commemorate the beginning of Mexican independence. It was celebrating Mexican Independence Day. And tonight, I'd like to issue this proclamation. Whereas in 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law National Hispanic Heritage Week, which in 1988 was expanded into a month by President Ronald Reagan. And whereas each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th, paying tribute to generations of Hispanic and Latino Americans who have positively impacted and enriched our nation and society, and whereas thousands of residents of Hispanic and Latino heritage who reside in Bakersfield and Kern County share their rich history and culture to the great 
benefit of our community and economy, and whereas the City of Bakersfield continues to recognize the numerous contributions to our community by persons of Hispanic and Latino descent, now therefore I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim September 15th, through October 15th, 2023, as National Hispanic Heritage Month in our city, and encourage all residents to honor and celebrate the significant contributions made by Hispanic and Latino Americans. We had an opportunity at El Grito to present a proclamation to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Councilmember Gonzalez uh, asked me to bring this forth tonight. So congratulations to all, and we will celebrate. Next item, please. Public statements. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, give them to the clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give your completed card to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or on a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify a specific agenda item will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items listed on tonight's agenda? Mayor, <coughs> we've received three speaker cards for items listed on tonight's agenda. The first two public speakers will be speaking regarding item 7E. The first public speaker tonight is Ricardo Ibarra, followed by Kathy Butler. Welcome, Chief Ibarra. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just want to briefly say that uh, I appreciate the city taking on the expense of the parade. Um, we were at first we were really struggling with it, and we went out and got an estimate on how much it would cost for us to to put it together, and we were looking somewhere close to twelve thousand uh, dollars. So I appreciate the city taking that on, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of other events that that happen in the city. Uh, a couple I just briefly want to mention are over at the uh, Portrait of War Gallery, uh, Vietnam uh, Veteran Day, and then also the POW MIA Day, which I think would be also beneficial for the city to take on. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, veterans, so much for your dedicated service to our country. Next speaker, please. Welcome. Mayor Go, City Council and staff. My name is Kathy Butler and I am with the Downtown Business Association and I am present tonight to encourage the city to continue their support for the Veterans and Christmas Parade. We are nonprofits and we have been coordinating these events for you for many years. I have served on the Veterans Committee as a judge for 35 years in the parade and also 40 years ago helped to bring the Christmas parade back after a 10-year hiatus. I have worked personally with the police department for 40 years in finding the best route for the parade so it doesn't affect a wide area of our city. It used to run down Chester to California Avenue but through the years and construction of projects we have tightened it to a smaller footprint so it doesn't affect too much of the city, but it's a benefit to our city. And we gladly volunteer our time to coordinate these two events, but 
We need your support, continued support for these. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Butler, and thank you for your more than 40 years of service to downtown. Next speaker, please. Lori Passante, regarding item 7D. Welcome, Ms. Passante. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lori Passante, P-E-S-A-N-T-E, -E, and I am a resident of the city of Bakersfield. I am speaking in my personal capacity tonight. Um, indeed, about my family's land that was a subject of the September 13th meeting. Um, I didn't know that it was a subject of the September 13th meeting because I only got one notice in June related to the annexation of those south parcels. I would request that we be explicitly notified when this is going to be on the agenda for the planning commission, for any you know upcoming city council meetings, et cetera. I will say that when I sent an email to every single one of the council members, um, I did get a very prompt response from some of you, and especially from Mr. Boyle, who was extremely generous with his time this afternoon with me and my mother-in-law. I can tell that this is going to be a journey for me and my family, and I appreciate your patience while we are gathering information about how this is going to impact us. Um, we know that as much as our family has been a part of the past here in Kern County and Bakersfield, we desperately want to do the right thing for its future. And I agree with what Mr. Freeman said at the last meeting about the importance of meeting directly with people to have direct conversations with them so that we can hammer out any details that, that need to be hammered out and avoid anything that's unnecessary, right? And indeed, I'm really glad to hear about the Veterans Parade tonight because my grandfather-in-law, he used to restore the military vehicles that they used to carry the POWs from World War II because he was a POW who was imprisoned at a concentration camp in Germany. And he was carried out during liberation by a German soldier. I look forward to working with you all. Please provide me with notice, um, and I appreciate the information about how things will not change for my mother-in-law, and she will not be required to pay anything extra, and her taxes won't go up, and all the uses are gonna be grandfathered in. So thank you for sharing that information. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Pisante. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Mayor Go, we've received one speaker card for non-agenda public statements. Go ahead and call the person, please. Zach Griffin. Good evening, Welcome. council members. My name is Zachary Griffin, staff and fellow citizenry. Uh, I'm here tonight. I've actually sent everyone, I believe I sent an email to uh, all staff uh, in regards to an infrastructure project that is currently uh, already in place at the uh, intersection of Panorama and, uh, Al excuse me, Monta Vista, I had to remember. I went out there today and took a look at that project itself. It severely impacts cyclists. I think the aim of the uh, project is to stop youth who are leaving uh, Garces' parking lot from cutting across and making uh, an illegal left turn uh, going south onto Union. However, um, I've had many, um, Many cyclists ride that in the last week, and it absolutely uh, pinches them off and puts them in an absolutely life-threatening uh, position, which is against sort of current road, um, federal road sort of standards. Uh, so again, um, obviously we can't deal with that here tonight, but I'd like to move this forward and be able to address this issue uh, so we can work at improving this. As we know, active lifestyles are a vital, important thing for Humans in general, Bakersfield suffers from a high obesity rate. Uh, and I, as an educator, uh, I am a special education teacher at the Alternative Education Program here in Bakersfield. And I recognize how much uh, active transportation and active lifestyles help our youth. We have an, an epidemic of overweight children and creating a system that pushes people from doing that. When moms are driving up there, they're thinking, I'm not going to let my kid ride on this thing. This is crazy. Someone's going to die. So with that, um, I would love to hear um, your guys. I would love to hear the answers to the, some of the questions that I had posed within my email. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you guys in the future. And I would love to see this move to a, an, a, either a subcommittee or something like that where we could continue this conversation. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Councilmember Arias. Thank you, Mary Go. Thank you, Mr. Griffin, for coming tonight. Um, as you may be aware, uh, myself and several of my colleagues are very interested in making sure that our city is more walkable and bikeable. Um, and uh, appreciate you coming and, and shedding light on this issue. This is not in my ward, unfortunately, but uh, if we could have staff take a look at that and uh, connect with Mr. Griffin to learn more about what the challenges are, and I'd be happy to uh, welcome a presentation on this very matter in the um, ad hoc on transportation. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Kelly James. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm a little nervous because this That's is my okay. first. Uh, so uh, before I get started, I would like to say like this is my last um, step in trying to get help for what is going on locally. I'm assuming that no one is actually aware of it, but some of the city's funds are being misused through the IDP program, which is the Indigenous Defense Program. I don't know if some of you guys uh, heard of the program or not but it's a program that is used to help inmates and anyone with a co-defendant, they fund them for an attorney. The issue is that some of the attorneys that are being appointed to some of these guys that need help, the attorneys are demonstrating misconduct. They have been disciplined by the bar as far as um, being suspended from the bar on previous occasions, more than one occasion. And some of the funds that are being used, they're not regular retainer fees that a regular citizen will pay. These uh, fees are based on the complexity of the petitions or cases that these defendants are fighting the prosecutors for. So some of the fees, for example, I've done research is as much as $20,000. The issue is that people like me, the minorities and uh, people who can't obviously speak for themselves that are um, in prison, <laughs> these attorneys are not informing them that they represent them. They're waiving their rights for them without permission. They're missing deadlines to file paperwork. And some of the ones that are actually eligible to come back to uh, hearings, they are not being uh, transported based off of the attorney waiving their rights. Uh, another thing is that some of these attorneys, which I, I can leave this with the clerk, they are, they are filing uh, fraudulent, well, bringing fraudulent paperwork to the judges as well. Thank you for sharing this, James. Your time is up, and you can go ahead and give that okay. to the clerk, and she'll get copies. To Thank us. you. Thank you for sharing. <coughs> Madam Clerk, do we have any other speakers? And that was our final speaker, Mayor. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Ms. James, for your comment. Um, Ms. Gennaro, if, if you would be willing to have someone from your staff reach out to Ms. James and connect her with the Kern County Bar Association who runs the IDP program. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar item 7A through 7AI for approval. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Does any member of the council wish to recuse themselves from any item? Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, I, Council Member Bob Smith, will abstain from items 7C and 7AI. 7C may be a source of income, and 7AI, I am involved in adjacent real estate. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Any other Council Members wish to recuse themselves from any item? Does any Council Member wish to pull an item for separate consideration? I have one request from Council Member Gray to pull item 7AG, if I'm reading that correctly, from the consent calendar uh, for separate consideration. With that, I'll make a motion to approve every item. We have one other recusal, Council Member Kaur. Um, I, Council Member Kaur, recuse myself of 7C um, for reasons of impropriety as well. Thank you. 
Vice Mayor, I believe the city clerk uh, had a memo that staff pulled item. No, it's not pulled. Okay, my my uh, my bad. Sorry. Okay, with that, I'll make a motion to approve um, all items on the consent calendar except for item seven A G. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved with Councilmember Freeman absent and Councilmember Kaur abstaining. I, I th she made a mistake. Um, how does, Madam City Attorney, how does that work? I'm assuming that you want a green, right? You want yeah. approval, right? Just change it. The record should denote that council member Core's vote is not an abstention, it's, it's yes. Thank you. Do you want to announce it, Madam Clerk? Motion is approved with council member Freeman absent. Thank you. And now 7AG, council member Gray. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. We appreciate you being here, and especially those college students that are trying to learn more about the process. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to bring, uh, I wanted to pull this item tonight. Forgive me, I think Council Member Kaur, the Mayor and myself, are all getting over something going on, so we're coughing and whatever. You'll know what's going on if I get choked up. Um, I wanted to pull this tonight just so that we can discuss it because being, reading this in the administrative report where we had a contract with MIG Incorporated Design Company for um, the uh, general plan, the master plan for parks and rec of 522,000. All of a sudden tonight we're approving 3,522,000. Um, when I saw that it was like, how did we get here? What's, what's going on with this? So um, I began to have an at length conversation with our city manager on Tuesday so that I could better understand and not just jump to any conclusions of w how we got where we were. And um, I learned that there were added elements to increase the compensation, expand the scope of the buildings and the pool and to pre prepare construction documents for MLK Park. So I was satisfied with that answer, um, with you know, increasing this to that three million, because um, the city has decided they're going to go in a different direction with a design build type process to help keep the budget under control. At the same time, getting into more detail about the MLK Park and the community center. I felt that more conversation needed to and should be brought to the public's attention of um, what is happening with this particular project. So before I, I go forward with any more remarks, I want to make it clear to my colleagues on this dais, and I want to make it clear to the public that I am in favor of in, um, investment in the MLK Park. I think it's much needed. It's way overdue. We need to be investing money out there. But as I dug a little deeper into this with our city manager, just asking questions as any businesswoman would, um, I started kind of questioning maybe the complete direction that we're going. So um, let me just say this. With further con conversation, I thought we had a budget in mind to design to, and the funds were already gathered and identified. And I learned differently than that, that yes, there's kind of an overall budget, 
But much to my surprise, I learned that out of an $80 million projected cost, only $6 million in ARPA funds, uh, one-time funds, and $5 million of federal grants have actually been identified that that's actual money that we have to s start this journey. Um, there were also mentioned that private donations that they were going to be going after. They were going to be going after more federal grants. And so when asked, well, how much money is that going to end up being? Approximately $40 million. We're still at a $40 million shortfall there. So I wanted to find out, okay, how are we going to come up with this remaining $40 million and talk about that a little bit. And there has been conversation that the city would get a loan for that additional $40 million to continue on with this $80 million project. Um, I asked about other debt. Is our city in other debt? And we're not, with the exception of um, through the water department and the, and the payees, people that that are provided water, they're helping to pay for that debt. So it's servicing itself. So it got me thinking again, okay, that's a lot of money. So in the last 10 years, how much money have we spent on parks and Re recreation for other projects, not counting the six to $8 million we've been spending um, for the last three years, which was very needed uh, when our new parks and rec director came on he got busy and said you know we've got some we got some maintenance to take care of around here things that have been ignored and so we've been very active in bringing these parks up to standard all over the city of bakersfield but mlk park is one that has not that's not happened with so i definitely understand why we need to get involved there and again i'm willing to make that um investment but with it being a design build process now the city wants to get involved with, which I'm very much for, our business is a design build company, which means that our clients come to us and they say, this is what we want to do. We give them a budget, a budget range of what that's going to cost, and then they can make the decision if that's a budget that they can live with, that they, have, they can afford, and if so, we march on. That's the same process that what we need to go through with the city, but the, but the issue is right now, we don't have the funds to be marching on with an $80 million project from what I understand at this point after the conversation that we had on Tuesday. So um, being the economic climate that we're in, in the uh, federal government with a $33 trillion deficit, with our state government with a $31.5 billion deficit, and with our city this year having a $10 million shortfall that we had to, had to come from PSBS, I think it's important that we really look at this project with eyes that we are not getting so deep into it before we can actually understand the reality of what's going on here. Our oil industry is under siege in Kern County. Um, so that's gonna affect our economy in this city. Eventually, we're gonna start seeing that effect. Um, in the last 10 years, the biggest projects we've had were $11 million out at Kaiser Permanente and $8 million at Mesa Marin. So when you compare those projects, and we're talking $80 million, wow, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So I am just encouraging, you know, if we could raise private donations of $80 million to pay for this, I'm all for it. And I'm all for an investment out there. But my common sense, I guess, tells me that we may need to look at this project with different eyes so that we don't get our city in a bind down the road when maybe we could start experiencing some, you know, less federal grants coming, less state grants because of the economic condition that our country's in today on our city. So with that, 
I just wanted to um, bring it to the floor. I think there can be a compromise. Um, I, I want to see maybe there's a, a different, we can condense this thing down some, not have to go, you know, full blown. Again, $80 million is a lot of money. And um, President Lincoln said in his 10 cannots, you cannot bring about prosperity by discouraging thrift. I think we need to encourage some thrift from this dais and make some smart decisions because that $40 million can affect our city for decades to come. So with that, I would just, uh, I uh, want to move to approve um, PSVS AG um, for the purpose of getting a clearer picture of what this project would cost when it's all said and done so that we can make some prudent decisions, educated decisions, and we don't have things coming to us at this dais that we don't have enough background of or um, enough um, finances to complete. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, Christian, I don't know how many times that I've made the comment that we need a vision for Bakersfield. We need a vision for Bakersfield. And the closest I'm seeing to that is this project. It is a vision for Bakersfield. It's maybe the highlight of Bakersfield right now. But it's only one part. And if we don't really focus on a vision for our city, it's just going to be willy-nilly. If we know, you know, we have logistics, we have things here that we can build upon, we need tech parks here, we need this, we need a vision for the city to grow and expand to where we can afford um, this, this type of effort. I mean, we don't have the money for it right now, but hopefully we'll find it. But this is exactly what I've been talking about. And if we don't build at least what we think we want in 10 years, then we're just going to end up there. No matter what, you just end up. I think we need to do a better job of that. I, I don't really want to leave here. You know, I've only said this for 17 years, so I really don't want to leave here, and we haven't even started on it. And I know it's an, a huge effort, but if you want projects like this, this is what we have to do. And we need to blend them in and, and make it a city project. And I, I firmly believe that, and I, I think it's time that we did that. And so however you want to do it, I'm with you. But it needs to be citywide. And it doesn't need to be so identified at the beginning. We need to know basically what, what do you want? Christian, what do you want this Baker's, what do you want Bakersfield to look like in 10 years? I mean, I can, I could kind of tell you what I want, but it, it, this is important because if you don't do these major projects and if you don't have a, an eye to get to these projects, it'll never happen. And I'd like your comments on that, please. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Um, and I would, just to begin, I, I think um, the, the definition uh, of vision too, so you know, we've been through a visioning process with a vision statement, but I think you're talking about more than just words on a page, more than just a vision statement. But also, um, I would point to the um, strategic items, of, you know, as we, um, have gone through a workshop in this last year to identify strategic actions for this year. We also looked at a five-year set of strategic actions. We revised the city council goals um, in that process. 
um, uh, there we had identified um, bigger ticket items that were sort of what we might call the game changers that you know, we need to accomplish in the next five to ten years. Uh, and then uh, we created just a one-year work plan for moving forward. So I would agree with you on a couple of the um, uh, items that you mentioned are in that list of you know ten big game changers. We need uh, a technology park. We would like to also build an advanced manufacturing corridor um, in um, uh, the 58, you know, um, Highway 58 corridor where there's already some industrial, but revitalized to be um, a advanced manufacturing corridor. Uh, I think we also. Um, uh, talked about addressing just affordability and uh, our ease of the development process, making sure that uh, we're be, you know becoming the most business friendly city in California. Um, and so uh, I think some of those big buckets for job creation are around um, that tech park, the evolution of the energy sector, as well as advanced manufacturing. Uh, and then uh, quality of life, I think, as you mentioned, uh, this, this type of project is one of those that addresses quality of life significantly. And then lastly, uh, just is, you know, this is just picking off some of the, the most important top 10, is really looking at uh, our built environment. You know, how are we um, uh, creating um, some densities in the right places, but then also protecting neighborhoods in the right places? Um, and addressing you know circulation and safety in ways that make a lot of sense. Those are um, more quality of life and residential look. Like what does Bakersfield look into the future? That's a big piece of that. Um, that's um, more about quality of life. But you, you have good points about the big job generators. We think for economic development into the future are going to be uh, around um, that advanced manufacturing and the tech parks and the and the evolution of the energy industry. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I do. But we're starting, in that case, we're starting from what we have and trying to build up. And what I'm saying is we need to know what we want to be and from where we are now, build up to that. There needs to be a picture of Bakersfield. It needs, we, need, we need to know what we want to grow into. And it, and it doesn't come from statistics or what I want or what anybody wants up here. It's what's best for the city of Bakersfield. Yeah, thank you, uh, Council Member. Uh, two additional thoughts on that. And, and I would acknowledge to you that you've been consistent in asking for um, what might you might call image or rendering of what does it really look like. It's fine to have words on a page, but what does it really look like? And I think that's sort of uh, 3D visualization is what some folks call that. And so our, our, I think our general plan update is really key piece of that in both what do sort of colors on the map look like for zones, but also uh, we are under contract right now to create more of 3D images for these key industry areas of the city so that we can kind of see what, what does the city look like vertically and sort of horizontally instead of just, you know, on, on paper. And so um, that was feedback that, that has been shared by council. And so we have uh, three visualization projects that are in process. And we think we need to do that for multiple parts of town because we're a big enough city. Uh, one, one image of, of the town is not quite, um, frankly, um, it'd be too small if we did it all in one image. We're wanting to create these 3D maps of several of our key um, industry areas uh, so that we can see what it really looks like. And, and again, that does, you're right, that paints a much bigger vision to say, you know, well, we're going to accomplish that. We've got to do some really big work to build, bring in the right businesses and even, frankly, in some parts, the residential to um, um, make it a reality. Um, uh, a different look and feel for the city. Yeah. I, I would just say that <clears throat> that is what we need to be looking at. How to get there is a whole different thing. And if we don't start striving for that, um, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make some progress. But I don't think we'll be the city that personally I'd like to see. So if you could just 
think about that for a while and maybe we could have some conversations with that. But um, this project, right, here, it, it just, that's what, I mean, it didn't. It didn't start from well. What What do we need here? He, we, we're building a building our own dream for that, and we need to do that for the city, its entirety. So, as much as we could look into that, I'd really appreciate it. So, I, I promised I wasn't going to leave here until we had a vision of the city. And maybe tonight's my last night, but I don't. <laughs> I hope not. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Weir. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I, I would just agree with Councilmember Weir that this this is the vision that we want, and and it's it's exciting to look at it come up in this neighborhood and and to move forward with it. And I would say we we have moved forward on other projects that we weren't quite sure where the money was coming from. Uh, Hagman flyover is one that's still out there that you know we've got designed and, and we're looking for money to make it work. But yeah, you first have to have the vision and then if you do the plans, then it becomes uh, more concrete and more easier to, to figure out how to get the money. So I, I think it's a great project and excited to see it move forward. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say the same thing Councilmember Smith actually said um, in that there have been many examples where uh, we continue to pursue the design of a project um, prior to figuring out all of the very financing. And in cases, sometimes the design actually helps us uh, pursue certain um, uh, grants, whether federal or state, um, in order for us to advance the project forward. Um, I, I just want to make a comment before I make some larger points in that you know, I, I think this, uh, the comment that somehow we're running a deficit, um, I think that's, that's a specious argument, uh, Councilmember Gray. Um, you know, we, we know that Public Safety and Vital Services Initiative was a general tax, and it was to support the ongoing functions of the city and to prevent future cuts. And it's actually written in the ballot language uh, to prevent cuts. Um, and so that was a necessary and appropriate step for the, for the council, and we should be thankful to the citizens and the taxpayers for that investment in our city so that we can provide high quality services um, without uh, the need to make uh, cuts. Um, but, but more to the point regarding this, um, we need a vision. We, we, need, we need to continue to articulate our vision as a council. I agree with council member Weir. Um, I, I feel like, you know, there are, um, there are, um, manifestations of that vision uh, in our um, council goals, um, in certain plans like the downtown um, area plan. Um, there are other uh, pieces where, or documents that um, also articulate the vision, the collective vision of the city and its future. Um, and I think it's important for us to continue to pursue those visions in very real ways. The, the downtown station area plan, by the way, is one that I'd like us to revisit and continue to see and benchmark our activities um, and, and what we've done and what we've accomplished uh, against our big vision and those plans that we set forth um, now already six years ago. But as we work towards, um, as we work towards articulating better that collective vision, uh, we also have to get to work and pursue some of those things that we set out to do, particularly in our council goals. And this piece has been a major priority that has been established, and it's reflected actually in the in the budget. And so um, I'm thankful that council member. I think I heard you make a motion. Is that correct? Okay, so I'm thankful that you made the motion tonight. I think we ought to pursue this and continue to advance this project forward. And we certainly have a lot more work to do, um, including uh, the funding and financing of the project, uh, but we need to continue forward and, and realize this vision. Because I think Councilmember Weir put it best. Uh, 10 years will come and go, vision or not, and the time will be spent. And so let's spend time now uh, creating a vision and working uh, post haste uh, to pursue that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Cor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to share that 
this project truly is visionary. I mean, if you've seen the renderings, um, I see the vision clearly with this park and this project. In fact, I see it clearer than a lot of the other projects that I've um, gotten to learn about uh, while having joined the council. And when you study city planning very closely, the renderings, the every step of the way, the design really is what is the most crucial part. And I think folks have said it here before, but we are building in a neighborhood where both investment and love have gone without for far too long. And when a community goes decades without that ad adequate love and investment, it takes time and money to catch up, both in funding and in infrastructure, in vision as well. But I think we have the most crucial piece to this project, and that's the community that has been coming to our council, that has been coming to the meetings, planning this project. This is their project. This, we have the honor of bringing it to life, and these renderings are just an example, are just a reflection of their vision for their neighborhoods and a park that they have still continued to attend, no matter if it has the safety or infrastructure that it should have. Um, people continue to pour love into it, even when we didn't. Those community members still did. And so even when we speak up against any part of this project, I think that sends a message to the community members who have worked tirelessly in spending time after school, after work, coming, going out of their way to come in front of the dais to show support every single time this project, the MLK Park updates, are on our agenda. And this is the Bakersfield I'd like to see. In fact, I think when this project is complete, I think even the renderings um, are going to draw attention. Uh, and this will be a, a landmark within the Central Valley. And I truly believe that, and I know that to be true. And I give all of our kudos to the community that has advocated for, advocated for it, our representatives, uh, and especially our Rec and Parks Director, Rick Anthony, and his staff and team. Uh, it takes a lot to put this vision forward and continue the fight. And I think it's been the most collective action I've seen. Um, and this is how government truly works, is when you have the partnership of both uh, the community and, um, and a city. Uh, who's being innovative and creative and going after different sources of funding. And we've had the support of even our congressional elected officials uh, in, from this area, state uh, officials. So this is a project a lot of folks at a lot of different levels are invested in. So I'm so excited to see updated renderings and I'm very supportive of this project. So thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Cor, Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to confirm that the motion was per staff report. There was no addition or subtraction from it. Okay, thank you. Council Member Arias. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I could ask the amazing Parks and Rec Director to please join me at the dais. Um, I, trying to process a lot of the comments that were made, um, but I'll use this as a, another opportunity really to shed light on some of the amazing work that Rick and his team have done. Um, so Rick, if we could just start uh, by sharing a little bit about the history of how this got started, who was involved, how have we gotten to this point, and um, I know we must dare to believe that we can get to that $80 million, but if you could shed some light on how we plan to get that done, I'd appreciate sure, it. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for um, your comments. For the record, Rick Anthony, uh, Director of Recreation and Parks. Uh, when I started uh, in this position, uh, there were three big priorities uh, that we identified, obviously the safety of the parks, uh, and then updating the master plan. Uh, very shortly after that, a group of community members came to my office, brought me a plan. I don't remember exactly what date it was, but it was a 2003. You got it. <laughs> I think you were a part of that contingency. But they were really passionate about the condition uh, of MLK Park, which I also want to mention is really our only true community center that we have in the city that's ran. Um, 
So that quickly became a priority, and I'm very grateful for the support from all of you because you continue to support and vote uh, as we move through uh, that process. Um, but that was something that uh, we knew early on that we wanted to uh, rise up for the challenge. And so we made it a part of our master plan, but we also were very clear that this was going to take a parallel path so we were going to, we, most of the time when you do master plans, you wait till the master plan is complete, you set the priorities and you get to work. I think there was enough public engagement that had already happened, there was enough passion and enough support that we didn't want to wait, that we knew that we needed to get something done. I can tell you that building has been far out of compliance for a very long time. So that became urgent for us. We bought the county property right next door with that same vision in mind. We brought concepts to you all in November with that same vision in mind. We worked with over 25 community stakeholders throughout this la these past couple of years who tweaked it, who they were fighting late night meetings. Everybody wanted something, and we had come to this concept. So this is, you know, in my belief, this is exactly what I believe you brought me here for. I really do believe that. It's a, it's a challenge. Um, I believe we're up for the challenge. I accept that challenge. I think that we can get there. We have identified about $49 million already just in grants and support, and we're having a very targeted campaign with advocates, support, along with MIG, that will begin a public campaign for this in October. So you'll receive an update for the entire master plan, but certainly we will talk a lot about the MLK project. I hope I answered what you wanted me to answer. <laughs> that and then some. I appreciate Thank that. Um, and so, to be clear, you know, we are going to be making some serious and strategic investments into MLK Park, but it is not that it's not going to come at the expense of other parks throughout the city. Is that correct? That is not the intent. Um, the master plan report will certainly make some recommendations and priorities. It, it can't be. Isn't I think for far too long we've had this either or conversation, it has to be an end both. We have to find ways to not only develop parks that people have been waiting for for 10 or 15 years in their neighborhoods, we have to be able to renovate our older parks, and we have to do legacy projects like we're doing here at MLK, which by the way is gonna be a tremendous benefit for the entire city. Great, thank you so much, Rick. Thank you. I'll just, I don't mean to belabor the point, but I think, uh, Councilmember Weir, you shared that you know we need a, a vision, and I I want to give credit to staff. Um, I want to give credit to the community uh, because I believe that we are building that vision. Uh, if you take a look at some of the work that we've done through the Transformative Climate Communities Grant uh, for this particular area, we have completely redone the streets uh, along and adjacent uh, right there on California Avenue. Uh, we have fought the good fight to make sure that we have some investment dollars in the Bakersfield Senior Center to service um, our, our Bakersfield seniors. Uh, we've got amazing projects that include urban greening projects, garden collaboratives, safe routes to schools. We have a brand new uh, high school down in Southeast Bakersfield, Del Oro High School. Um, we are working on active transportation projects along 4th Street. Uh, we are also doing the same thing along MLK Boulevard, and I can go on and on and on because I am so proud of the vision that we are creating. My request to my colleagues is to join us in that vision. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. You have a motion? Please catch your votes. Motion is approved with Councilmember Freeman absent. Thank you, and next item, please. <clears throat> Council and Mayor statements. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I mentioned it just a moment ago, but the uh, downtown area plan or the station area plan was a document that the city adopted, uh, in, I believe in 2017. Um, and I'd like us to review um, that document and get an update on the action items. There are many that we've already pursued and, and items that we've completed. And if we can do that uh, within the next 
six months or so. Um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Arias. Thank you, Mayor. A couple of uh, quick updates. Uh, one, I would like to make a referral on the to, to receive a park ranger program update. I remember at the inception of that program, uh, we promised the community and uh, members of this dais um, that we would get an update in the Safe Neighborhoods Committee. So tonight I would like to make a referral uh, that we, we get an update on that that's inclusive um, of a discussion on citations, uh, the municipal code relevant to that program, and also a discussion on the park hours throughout the city. Um, and then secondly, I just want to take a moment and recognize uh, our um, uh, Public Works Director, Greg Strakalus, and his amazing team. Uh, just over this past week, I've received several uh, comments from uh, residents along Laurel Drive and Sander Drive, uh, which is just north of South High School in the Southgate neighborhood. Um, and for the first time in 10 years, uh, the city of Bakersfield has installed uh, speed humps uh, on this, on uh, in these neighborhoods, um, you know, it was it was one of the things that I had heard, you know, when I was campaigning several years ago, uh, that folks were driving on this neighborhood residential street where they should have been going 25 miles an hour or slower, and we're going 60, 65, um, and it was just uh, not a good situation for anybody. So uh, I know it took some time and a couple of steps to get there, uh, but we couldn't have done it without your leadership. So thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'd like to make a referral and have a resolution come back regarding uh, veterans. I've, I've been meeting with veterans a lot recently, and it's it's heartbreaking the way we treat our veterans after they've served us, and now we refuse to serve them medical service. I I would ask that we bring a resolution asking our congressman and, and the United States Congress to acknowledge veterans have served us and now should be served by us. And that every veteran should be able to have a Medicare card in Kern County. It could be a pilot project in Kern County so that they could get service anywhere. They don't have to drive two hours to Fresno or Los Angeles that they could get the service they need in their community. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Core. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to use my time today to share something uh, deeply affecting our local sick community. In the past few weeks and months, time stood still for six across the world when the president of Suri's Gurdwara, Shahid by Hardeep Singh Nijid, was gunned down in his own place of worship on Canadian soil. I want to say that again. A Canadian citizen gunned down on Canadian soil in his home of worship, a place six find most sacred. In fact, more than just a place of worship, a community center, a safe haven. Last week, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that Canada had determined India's culpability in the Nijar killing based on signals and human intelligence from an unnamed partner in the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, comprising of the US, Canada, the UK, New Zealand, and Australia. The Intercept also reported this past week that the FBI has warned six in the United States about death threats after the murder of Shahid by Hardeep Singh Nijid. The FBI visited six residing in California to warn them, your lives are at risk. Six throughout the US have received police warnings about potential threats. A citizen of a sovereign nation like the United States uses their constitutionally granted right to the freedom of their own speech and are then threatened by a different country this undermines not only our democratic institutions, but our individual rights and the national security of the United States. Locally, six are the third largest population group in the city of Bakersfield and in Kern County. My district, Ward 7, has the third highest concentration of six in the entire state of California, with four Gordoare, a sick place of worship. Just to paint a picture, of the thriving local community that calls Bakersfield home. 
Now, this is a reality my sick elders have lived with for years, so this is not breaking news to them, but it is validating for their lived realities to not be mislabeled as those being fake fears. Those who escape the political atrocities of India to find refuge in places like Bakersfield, California, face a new threat from a foreign government while being citizens of a nation that protects their civil liberties, the very reason they chose to call this land home. I want to share my gratitude to our congressional representatives from California who have voiced their concern and calls to action, the first being Congressman Jim Costa, Congressman da David Valadeo, as well as Congressman Eric Swalwell. And to my sick community, while this is not a new reality, if you or someone you know has concerns for your own safety, I urge you to reach out. Know that you have our resources and support, and I implore our local law agencies as well to take all and any threats with the utmost seriousness given this moment. I'd like to speak specifically to my Punjabi community. Jis hakikat di apanu, jis hakikat karke apanu chute, activist, even terrorist kya jandava, aj dunia diya sabto vadiya hukumata sach manariyane. Par haje in saf bakia, jis sikhandi jan nu khatrava, fir United States varge mulka nu ona de naam vi sanje karne chaydene, jo parat sarkar de kente sikhanu target kari jarene. To see me no a cursi which but hiava, the is cursi da fada kia, ji apa sekande mudene chak sakade. Thoditi thodenal karia, math or denal karia, jetevi upon vas or ta sakadea, upon tamage. United States divi sarkar which her had tak upon jamange is in saf di ladai de which. Vahigrujika kalsa, Vahigrujiki fate. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other requests to speak, and so we stand adjourned at 623.